Hi, welcome to Calciard. In this video tutorial series, we're making a two-player racing game using Scratch 3.0. In this video, we've been making realistic driver controls, an off-road script, and some sound effects. So in the last video we had some driver controls where we basically would press the up arrow to increase the speed and once the speed was set it's going to just stay at that speed unless we press the down arrow to change it. So instead I want to show you some programming which is on this red car right now where when I press the accelerator it's going to keep accelerating as long as I press it. So if I press down it's increasing up. So if you hold it down it's going to get faster and when you let go it's going to slow. So it's going to give a much more realistic movement and that's what we're going to make today. Okay so how does the car move at the moment? Well when you press the S arrow which is for reverse or if you press this W arrow which is for forward so forwards and backwards and they both do the same thing. Um, except this one at the very start will initialize and set the P1 score to zero, score speed, sorry, to zero. But essentially they're both forever going to check to see if, if the W key is pressed or the S is pressed. And if they are, they either go negative or positive. That's exactly what we want right now. That's like a normal accelerator on a car. So if I press here, watch, it's going to keep increasing. But the problem is, is that although it keeps increasing, it doesn't come back down again. So think about when you're riding your bike or when you're in the car and you take your foot off the accelerator or you stop pedaling, um, your car, your vehicle is not just going to stop. So we're going to make this movement. We're going to use a new block. So at the moment we use an if block, but we can also use an if else block block. So we can say, well, what about if the W key is pressed, I still want to change my score, my speed like that, but I want to have an option for once the speed is stopped. And an if else basically is a Boolean logic. So that means there's two possible outcomes. True and false. So if the W key is pressed, that's true. So when that's true, we go forward. But what happens when that's not true? So when it's not true, we call it else. So what else can happen? Well, we can start changing our speed to go the opposite direction. So we can have it now decrease the speed. So we'll use the same variable blocks and do a change, but we're going to do the negative change. So I'm going to change and make sure that I change the variable. So this is going to be P2 speed, right? So then I'm going to change the P2 speed by a negative one, okay? And then I also want to do the same thing that I'm doing here where I'm going to wait Okay, so you can right click to duplicate a block and drop that down there. Okay, perfect. And then so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this if statement and drop him in the trash and then drop in my new if else statement. And then if we restart that, let's see how our green car is doing. So if I press W, oh, now it seems like my speed is... Um, Okay, so it seems like my speed is not working here and you can see it's now constantly going uh, backwards. That's because when I said make sure you choose the right variable, I actually needed to choose the player one. So my bad. So player one speed was the one that should have been, and there he goes. So we'll stop that and we'll test again. So remember, this is always so important with um, testing. So now we've got a little bit of a problem because this is just repeatedly going backwards as the problem is, is that the W key is not pressed. So it's just always going backwards, which is not what we want. Um, and this is just a logic error. Um, so we're going to go back to thinking about how the car would work. So 
when the W is pressed forward, so if we press the accelerator, it increases. When we take our foot off the gas, it decreases. But when does it stop? How does it stop? Well, normally the stopping point is when there is zero. When you take your foot off, it doesn't keep reversing. You have to press the reverse button yourself. So we don't want to keep taking one away when we get to zero. So we're actually going to do our first nested if statement. So we're going to put an if inside of another if. So let me take from over here in the control section an if, and it's a very, very simple condition. I'm just going to put around, I hope I'm going to try and put it around this bit here. It doesn't seem to want to be too friendly. I'll just pop it in there. Okay. So well, what do I want to test? Well, I'm saying that if I get to zero, then I don't need to do this test anymore. I don't need to do this action. When do I need to minus one? Well, I need to do it every time that I'm above zero. So any time that my speed, so any time that P1 speed is bigger than zero, we should be doing this. So over here in operators, we can choose these comparison blocks. And we can say, okay, well, what about if the variable p1 speed is greater than zero. Okay, so anytime the speed is greater than zero, we're going to change it by minus one until it gets to be zero. Okay, so we'll start it and we'll test it. So I'm actually going to move him over just onto a bit of track here. So when I press forward, it's going to increase, and when I let go, Look at that. Did you see that slowly come back down? That is working code. Let's try that increase and down. Okay, so basically, we just want to do that exact same thing now for the reverse. So, what did we do? We said, well, we don't want to use this if block anymore, and we want to swap it for a different control, which was the if else. So, if the S key is pressed, Yes, we definitely want to change P1 by a negative one, because it's going backwards, and wait 0.1 of a second just so it doesn't happen too quickly. You, it's slow enough that the user can see it happen. And then if I duplicate this, that's right click to duplicate and drop in here. So we're going to have negative one when the S is pressed, so it's going to change it by negative one to send us backwards. And then if we let go, it's going to change by positive one because it's going forward. Okay. Now remember, when we get to zero, we want that to stop. So we're going to have to take another if block. So we're going to take an if then and put this inside of the if then. Drop that into here. I'm going to say, okay, well, if the P1 speed, so operator, if, and this time we want to say if it's less than zero. So if it's less than zero, it's going to keep adding one until it gets up to zero. So variables, the P1 speed, make sure you get your right variable name. So if the P1 speed is less than zero, we're going to change it by one. We're going to drop that inside of our forever loop, and we will now have hopefully a very good driver control. So I'm going to bring him down to here, and if I press forward, it's going to increase. I let go, it's going to slowly come back down, and if I reverse, it's going to increase. I let go, it slowly comes back down, just like a real car. Okay, so we've improved the driver control, made it more realistic. Um, and I can go pretty fast now, um, but also if I just jump across this grass here, I mean, it's not very realistic because if I'm driving on the road versus driving on the grass, the speed would change. If you hit the grass, you should be slowing down. Well, we want something that's running for the whole entire program from the very start. So as soon as the green flag is um, clicked, forever, all the way through the program, I want you to check for a condition. So what's our condition? Well, if the car, so a control, 
if the car, so if my car is touching, now this time we want to be touching a colour. So if I'm touching, and um, how am I going to know that colour? Well, Scratch is awesome. It has a colour picker built in. So if I select on this, I can actually pick anywhere on this whole inside um, stage. And it even magnifies it just like in the paint editor so you can perfectly get on the colour you want to be touching. But uh, we want this green right here. So if we're touching this green, what I want to do is to reduce the speed. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, whatever speed they're currently driving at, I'm going to half it. So I'm going to take, okay, so I'm going to take the P1 speed, okay, so whatever the P1 speed is, and I want to divide it by two. So I'm going to take the P1 speed and divide it by two, okay? But that's just a calculation. Where does that data go? How does that data make a change? Well, what we want to do is change the player's speed. So if we want to change the variable, we have to set the variable. So actually what we're going to do is set the P1 speed to be P1 divided by 2. So that's going to slow it right down. Let's see how that goes. Oh, and we may also want to just put in a, a small weight so that it has time to um, take effect. So also in control, we put in a small weight for, I'll just do like a quarter of a second or something, 0.25. So let's see what happens with that. So oh, green car. So here I am on my green car. Everything's going great. Let's see what my speed is. And then if I touch on that, oh, I can feel it drag. And can you see the decimal? On the speed so now as soon as I get back on the black I can start speeding up again but if I get in that green oh yeah it's really gonna slow so I'm really pushing now that's me pushing down with my full arrow so if I put him here I hold my arrow down I'm holding it down full it's barely getting there if I put it onto the black and hold full I'm gonna zoom away you could also further add to that by adding in uh, things like sounds. So, for example, if you touch the green, it would play a sound. And you just pop your sound into here. Um, <laughs> pop. And now I don't want pop, but as you can see, actually here, because I've been playing around with this, there's car passing, skid, are two ones that I've used before. I could also record my own ones. I would like meow. Um, but I could choose like car passing like that. Um, or a skid. Skid down here. But now if you want to look up sounds, you just go into the sound tab and select and add into here like a costume uh, for a sprite or a background. So just down here I can add. And they have a whole load of a uh, Sounds, you just choose the ones that you want um, and add them in. Um, let's hear how that sounds when it touches on the green. Oh, so, oh, 